Hello, this is Franz Cantor, uh, cartoonist, illustrator, yada, 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 and uh, I'm... And cite caricatures. Yeah, I, I'm... He never, I, I he actually never says, look at caricatures in a different way. He never says caricatures, and no. this is what it's all about. No, it's about drawing. Yes, but it's also a caricature drawing. Yeah, but I have a different take on caricatures. Which you we'll certainly do. And All right. I, and so I'm Jim Bridges. He never introduces me. Uh, I'm yeah. Jim Bridges, and I'm one of the founders <laughs> of the Australian Cartoon Museum. And yeah. here we are in downtown Docklands, the day before we officially open, or, well, we're allowed to open, whether we mm. open or not. And, yeah. um, and today we're going to draw another cartoonist. We are. Because I always say, who draws the cartoonist? It's not fair. They draw everybody else. And this well, they man, have, he's had a, a cover on Ink Spot magazine and things. And yes. Have a look at his and, and, and he's, had, done by he's been else. cartoonist of the year and a few other things too. It's yeah. George Haddon. Mm. It's George Haddon. Yeah, and and uh, this is what he, this is how he sees himself. <laughs> right. And he does a lot of work in watercolour, like France does. Mm. And Spooner. I love the fact he's sucking his I don't, toe. They make yeah. him <laughs> he does Before animals. Before it gets turned into alcohol, though. Yeah. Yeah. I had a long talk with him about um, watercolour. It's all of the sort of organic look. It's cauli they call that cauliflowering. Yeah. And so this it's is a very organic, very human, very beautiful technique. This is, this is um, a stuff he used to do for the RACV magazine. Yeah, this is Sovereign Hill. Yeah, and there's, that's the other side of the page. Mm -hmm. We can't actually show you the widescreen stuff. And he has humour in his line. Like, this is the Melbourne market. Mm. He has humour in his line. These are a little bit faded. They're not that bright, but in a way, you get the idea. This is the king on his throne. Mm. And that's the queen on her throne. Mm -hmm. um, they're a different sort of throne, as you can see. And there's a thing he did about the fire fireies who helped the the animals during the the fires we had recently. Yeah. Anyway, so let's that's get awesome. into him, eh? So he's a very um, prolific uh, cartoonist. Yeah, he is um, an illustrator, and um, mm. yeah, he does some. He, he's Part of a he told me once he's part of a group of uh, watercolorists that uh, yeah the Victorian Watercolor Society yeah that um, okay so you basically I've done a little thumbnail just trying to work out the different shapes to play with you know these are areas obviously he has big eyebrows so that's something we can factor into the into the mix pump them up you mean uh, pump them up not factor them in pump them up. A lot of very, um, he thinks quite a lot, so he's a big thinker. So there's a lot of um, lines in his head, which are very ordered. Um, there's a few th lines that, uh, what would you call it? Uh, crisscross. Inter intersect, crisscross, but there's no conflicting lines. There's no lines that start and then continue like that. They're lines that continue smoothly, right? So any conflicts or crisscrosses, are um, uh, you know uh, very very um, minimal, but um, they are there. We'll talk about so those. emotionally, sort of geometry, emotionally, the geography of the face. Emotionally, what do these lines mean? Well, these are very. These are like conflicts. These are like yeah. I thought one. I thought this way, and then I changed my mind, and I thought that way, oh, okay. and then I thought that way. So it's kind of like a conflict. It's a. It's like all of these expressions on your face. Mm. And there are conflicting expressions. Okay. So what happens with conflicting expressions is that uh, you tend to break up the the physiognomy of the of the muscles and things in okay. different directions. Okay. As opposed to this. So what's this line going up? This. It's. Um, it's. Well, these are sort of like uh, sectioning um, elements. They don't sort of interfere. They don't break this these furrows, right? Yeah. They don't break the furrows. They just sort of finely intersect, some, intersect. So that's kind of like maybe it could be intersecting ideas. So you get different sections, you know, like 
uh, section one, section two. <laughs> it could be that could be what it means. I don't know, but it uh, it's an interesting pattern it's that not, happens. It's, it's not the left hand side of the brain talking to the right hand side of the brain, is no, it? No, but uh, well, that's that's a contentious issue, right and left brain um, uh, theory. But the um, the idea of this is just it's more like emotions and thoughts that flash up on the face over time, mm. and they leave marks, okay. like erosion. So the other elements are the nose, of course. As you get older, your nose takes on a more of a, uh, a, a definite shape. You know, when you're a little kid, yeah. your nose is sort of like soft yeah. and round and mushy and shapeless. And pug nosey. Yeah. Mm. So as you, as you get older, of course, you know, it starts to take on, because there's a bone here, which is really important. This is the launch pad of, the, of, of this is the launch pad of many a story. So the nose comes out here, right from this bone. This is the launch pad. That's a very important uh, bone because there's a lot of. Oh, it's officially called the launch muscles. pad, is it? Yeah, that's okay. the launch pad. Right. That's the, the nose. That's where Elon Musk is going to launch the Mars probe from his nose, from that, that, really? uh, that thought, landmark. I thought he was going to launch it from his wallet. Yeah. Um, well, what else, else is there? Wallet. His hair is obviously of great interest. That's yes. you know, very long and um, es- and free. Especially at the moment during the, um, the COVID crisis. He, he told me on the phone recently that his hair is very long and his eyebrows are, are, um, uh, are dangerously... Um, yeah. So I've taken the... Um, his eyebrows are dangerous, are they? Well, is it Frank Lloyd. This no, is no. It, his it, it, eyebrows are designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> no, his eyebrows. So are they like, don't have anything holding them they're up. Like they're eagles, kind of. They're like eagles' nests. They're big, you know. And, right. You know, but at the moment, actually, and what, what, are, what are his eyes? Are a, the eggs in the nest? At the moment, he says he's, they're at a dangerous length. Right. You know. Dangerous length. Okay. Yeah, like they're a fire hazard. Let's put it that way. Right. Okay. So. So that's just. Some yeah, they're, they're, they're a cantilevered... Uh, what is that Frank Lloyd Wright's thing? Is that a, a floating... The um, What did he call that oh. building? Never mind. What the... I'm going to test his memory. Yeah. Falling water. That's right. I think. So, okay. Let's, let's go with uh, what we can find here. So we've got to s- establish a hierarchy... Yeah, the eyebrows. Yeah, got a nice, the eyebrows I took the first, this photograph. The hierarchy. Of the eye. You did take that photograph. Yeah, I took the photograph. So mm. his face is kind of like a peanut. That's in his studio. Yeah. yeah. His face is kind of like a peanut. And uh, you've got sort of an even light, but mainly it favours a light source that comes in from the top right. So you're going to get a bit of shading that's going to be broken up with a, a, a rim light on the left-hand side. You can put those books... Down. Or did you want to show more stuff? No, I've, I've got to read something here. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right, so uh, what else did I want to talk about? The um, we'll talk, well, Hang well, on, let's leave that there for a second. The T-zone. Leave that what there for a second. What are you doing with my pencils? I'm going to put it back. Not touching my pencils. See, this is a drawing he did. This is it. So I just want to basically, okay. we're concentrating on this mask area. Right, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. So that's where we're looking for our recognisable uh, relationships. Now, relationships are not because we're caricaturing; we're exaggerating shape. Okay, so we're basic. We, we've got a simple shape to start with, this peanut shape, and we're exaggerating proportions. So, in order to do that, before we put the details in, which is more of exaggeration, um, before you put the details in, you exaggerate the simple shapes. So the relationship, you keep an eye on the relationship between the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, and that will give us our, uh, our recognizable You've got to get that factors. right. Now, here's what a, have you got here? Here's a caricature he did of himself, yep. and notice just how hairy his eyebrows are. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, that would be about 30 years ago, that, that picture. Right. Okay. Yeah. He's aged well. Now, you want your pencil back? There we go. All right, so let's get ready to rumble. Not touching my pencils. No. If you touch my pencils... I break your face. See. Okay, here we go. So we've got a little bit of uh, perspective to contend with, of course, uh, which means that everything is is favouring a vanishing point. 
on the horizon. Um, we're not establishing the horizon. We're just sort of thinking about it as we go. So we just sort of remember to to factor that into the drawing. Okay. We've got a lot of fine lines here. We need to establish a hierarchy of what's important based his, on his eyes how are, prevalent these his lines are. His eyes are, are really important because George um, looks at everything. And yeah, you can so tell. many times I've seen him in a crowded room and my eyes just sort of panning across and, so, and it just lands on George and then there's this concentration in George's eyes as he's looking at someone. He's looking at faces, you know? Yeah. And he's just memorising their face. He does that all the time. Yeah. And so his eyes, in, 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 the, in the source material, mm. they're not bad, but they're a little bit uh, shadowed. Because what do you mean? Of, well, well they're, they're in shadow because of his eyebrows. Yeah. So I'd, I'd somehow, if I were you, not that I could ever you know, come to your standard, but if I were you, I'd put the emphasis on the eyes. You were talking about hierarchy. I can see what the eyes are. Yeah, I can of course see you the can. details. Because you've got eyes like him. So he's got a very. Um, you've got searching eyes yourself. <laughs> you've got a very. Uh, Searchlights. Yeah. Well, is, is you're trying to make. Um, you're trying to make relevance of the world. Let me just. Uh, sorry, I've just got to. Uh, I'm going to shake the phone for a sec. There you go. You set. Yeah, I think I've got it on silent. So I don't want to be disturbed at this moment because um, getting into, as I said, the T-zone, this is very important. So I, I, I have to sort of concentrate on it. Tell me a little bit about George while we get into Oh, OK. The well, here we are. Um, this is official mood. little bog he wrote himself. Um, born in Melbourne, 1937. Mm -hmm. He worked in a graphic design studio until 63, then joined the Melbourne Herald which became um, the Herald Sun. He mm -hmm. um, had a couple of overseas trips on the Herald, including three months travel scholarship. He also draw, drew Wally and the Major for the Herald for a couple of years, and then he did Wonders of Wildlife strip um, for about six years. And that was the strip that Paul Harvey and myself discovered, and mm. he in it he draws all these animals. And he really has a... He really has a special... Um, Relationship with animals? Well, a special gift in the way he draws animals. Right. He sort of humanises them. They're not wild animals. They're anthropomorphic. But in particular, in his dogs sense. are wonderful. And I've been um, asking him for years to do a kid's book on dogs because his dogs, he just brings their humanity. I mean, it's like your work. You, you do drawings of dogs and they're mm. absolutely wonderful because they act, you actually capture the in whoops don't hit the camera you actually hit uh, sorry you 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 catch you catch the the individuality of the dog right that's in your work not just the the breed but the individuality of the dog whereas george he he grabs the the human contact in the dog and they're just sketches they're just a few dots but where he puts those dots in the eyes and stuff it's just really good Yes. You know, I've always liked his, his dog's drawings, you know. Anyway, um, he's, won, he's won, I think, seven walkers, five walkers. Mm. He's either won seven or five. Can you explain what a walkley is? A walkley is, is um, the best illustration. It's a, a newspaper award mm. for the best illustration of the year. Well, the walkley is a journalist award. Yeah, journalist awards, but they have a special have a thing special for thing illustration for... and cartoons. Yeah. And I think he's won seven or, or five. Mm. And the joke was, when he got four, I mean, very few people even get one, but he's got lots of them. Mm. So the joke was that all the, all the cartoonists says, oh, now you can make a coffee table, because he's got four. Oh, one, one for each leg. That's right. That's right. Right. Um, and he, um, he's won many awards, um, as I said. Um, and he's uh, won the, the WD and H.O. Wills Cartoon Award in 1984. Samokan. He uh, resigned as the art, a Herald Art Director in 79 to freelance. Mm. Now, that's interesting because... You know, art Director. Yes. 
Now, well, a lot that's of cartoonists, from his design skills. A lot of cartoonists don't like art directors. No. For some vague reason. Mm. And George was an art director, but you just... Art, the, the good, sort, there are good art directors. Good art directors tend to let the cartoonists have their way and yeah. come up with their own ideas. And don't bad art directors, what do they do? They do backseat you? drive you all the way through. Ah, OK. So obviously his design um, experience has afforded him that ability to uh, maintain and uh, manage arts. And he has artists. this lovely... He has this lovely loose style that makes drawing look so effortlessly. Mm. It, it looks like he's just scribbled a few lines. It's just yeah. right, you know? That's what I love about his stuff. And, of course, um, George shakes his head and, you know, it's hard to do and all that sort of stuff, you know? But he, he, he makes it look so easy, so easy. Yeah. And, um, of course, he's, he's love for that and also, um, um, uh, you know, the, there's... Um, a bit of negativity coming his way because he makes it look so easy, you know? How dare he make it so easy? Yeah, um, and he's done lots of books. He's been on stamps. Mm. Oh, uh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Again, you know, that's more of his design background. Like yeah. Designers are uh, better equipped usually to survive in the real world because they have um, very good business skills. And he's got great... Um, uh, he's got, like, he's funny. His lines are funny, too. Mm. And um, his heroes are people like um, Ronald Searle. Mm. And Ronald Searle, he just loves his line like we all do. Mm. It's just an extraordinary... The, Ronald Searle's lines are just extraordinary. Yeah. And he also likes um, Felix Topelski, who is a Polish artist. Yeah. Uh, do you know anything about Topelski? Uh, he's not Killer Kowalski, I know that. <laughs> so explain who oh, Killer Kowalski is. You don't know who the hell he is. No. Okay, well, he was a Polish artist who was in London, I suspect, at the time. Mm. And when they had this big royal, um, what do you call it, um, procession, mm. I don't know what it was for. The Jim Carner? No, the no, no, they had some. Jamboree? It was the silver, silver anniversary of their wedding or something, I don't know, the Queen's wedding, or mm, I can't remember. Yeah. But he drew everybody in that ser in that in that parade right. life size. What the? And wow. they're all they're, and he works really fast. He, yeah. And he throws the lines around incredibly fast. Yeah. And it's the lines themselves. Um, in the last episode of the Ascent of Man, which is a BBC production about yeah by Bronkowski. Yeah. He uses his drawings. Right. Um, talking about the ascent of man. He uses his drawings. And they're very... Well, they're, they're, they look rushed and they're not fully formed, but they capture the person very quickly, mm. very quickly. So George has always been after that holy, that personal holy grail. Mm. And um, you have had some really good conversations. So to capture something... Um... Simply but de definedly, you know? Yeah. Um, and, of course, he's got this lovely colour that, that we saw just before. He's, he's a colourist. He? Yeah. Um, you and me did a little film a on him. beautiful personal... You and me did a little film on him um, where he's just throwing the, the colour around, you know? It's yeah, just beautiful. Chase, yes. it, chasing it like a... Like, a, you know, chasing yeah. the puddle. Yeah, chasing the puddle. Mm. And what you were calling it... He calls it cauliflowering, doesn't he? Cauliflowering, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a particular effect. It's very, very organic and... Yeah. It seems very... Um, sorry, I'm just trying to count here. It seems very... Um, He's got two eyes. Haphazard. Yeah. Oh, I forgot the eyes. What are you counting? The, the wrinkles. Oh, the wrinkles. It seems very haphazard, you know, like the... the um, orga very organic and, you know, and it seems like the colour will get away from you and create its own, <laughs> its own design. But uh, so you chase it, you you actually control it and bring it back yes, into a controlled. That's right. Um, and it looks like he's he, he's thing, put, as so. you said, pushing a puddle. Yeah. 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 Um, that's it's a great a beautiful, description of it. Yeah. It's a really um, watercolor. I haven't done watercolor in a long time, but I used to do it for like years and years and years, like twenty years of illustrating all these uh, magazine covers and things and illustrations for the newspapers and stuff. Um, in colour, so you know, black and white, of course, you don't. It's Indian ink, but the um, 
It's it's a difficult, isn't it? Because it, it's very hard. I mean, with, um, with, is, with oil, you can go back and fix it up, and all. you can't do it with watercolor. It's, it's oil, you can I've learned very quickly. You can't illustrate. Uh, in oils because the time factor takes so long well, to oils dry. Oils ain't oils. Yeah, it takes yeah, too long okay. to dry. It's not... Uh, but uh, thankfully, um, uh, watercolour, I actually used a, a, a technique which was kind of complementary to um, the working in oils. So it was uh, very interesting. I loved it. Um, yeah, so I wish I could get back into watercolour uh, again. It's just one of those things, you know. And it's actually it's quite difficult uh, digitally. Um, Digital watercolour? Yeah, it's, it's sort of... Because they've, they've that, managed to it, do oil paint. It sort of doesn't make sense. Did you, no, it does. Did you, digital watercolour doesn't make sense. Well, it's, it's all to do with understanding watercolour and understanding and making the algorithms work so that they can reproduce something that looks and feels like watercolour. Mm. So it's very difficult. Um, it's very, very difficult to do it digitally, but it can be done in, you know, to, a certain cent to a certain extent effectively. So digitally just means you've got it in your pocket, you know, on your iPad, off you go. Mm. Um, traditionally, watercolour is a pocket-sized... Uh, yeah, those, th those little pads they have, those little circular pads, you take it, fit the, in your pocket. The, the, the Vivas, yeah. Yeah, you fit in your pocket. Yeah, so, you know, um, it's water activated, of course, so yeah. even after a thousand years, um, you know, watercolours in museums have to be under glass because if anyone sneezes on them, they just run. Yeah. So they're not as permanent as you think, and they do tend to fade. They're not light, fast like oils they and acrylics. They do tend to fade, that's true. So they're very um, delicate for that reason. But they're pocket-sized and, you know, um, it's a travel... Uh, you know, a lot of artists go on travels and, and they yeah, just well, build up these beautiful... They're great for doing sort of quick sketches, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. And people, a lot of people who work in oils, who do landscapes and stuff, mm. they they do um, all their sketching with um, watercolour. watercolour. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a sort of a traditional uh, method of yeah, and they've got some wonderful designed little portable units. They can, they can, you know, with lots of colours and stuff. Yeah, little contraptions you can fold up and put in your pocket. And stuff, <laughs> yeah, they you have know. that. They, they, they tend. I mean, um, it's it's really. Um, but it's interesting because when we were at George's place and he was drawing, mm. it was just fascinating watching that colour all just, and he's just. He seems to be splashing it around, you know? Well, it looks like a kid's drawing. Yes. Right? Like a kid playing with paint, yeah. right? Yeah. But there is a, it, there, there's something oh, about that. Oh, this method in the which, madness. Well, yeah, there is something about that. It is very um, accessible, like a child, like, child, like children's painting. Yeah. Um, it's very immediate and it's very accessible. But, um, and it's, there's sort of a Zen method in, in uh, controlling water, you know, um, with uh, paint, pigment. It's just pigment in water. That's all it is. There's nothing else. No binder, no no, no glue, nothing else. It's called there. artistic osmosis. What's that mean? Uh, the balancing of the liquid uh, medium. I just made it up. Oh, did you? Yeah, I just made it up. I'm trying to work out how that would work, but okay. Well, I mean, you Artistic make up things osmosis. all the time. I stand by next to you and you make up things all the time. Like what? I go home and check out dictionaries and there's no such thing, you know. <laughs> you check out dictionaries? Yeah. Well, you should know better. I don't like dictionaries. I know you don't like dictionaries. Actually, I've got a book at home for... It's called Dictionaries for People Who Don't Like Dictionaries. So maybe I could buy it for you or something. Is it Give a it Pictionary? No. Oh, well, then... I like Pictionaries, too. Yeah. Um... So I, I like. I think you've got him. I think you've, I think you've got him. Eyes. By George, he's got he's him. Yeah. So you know he's really got these um, these landforms here. These beautiful. It's like a. Mm. What would you just? Uh, I would describe this as sort of like, you know, beautiful rocks on a beach. You know, <laughs> you get something that's that's obviously been affected by waves and yeah. by. Yeah. Wind and things like that, and you, you kind of look at it. Are and you, you think, saying that George has done weird, a bit? 
What a strange shape. Are you saying George has done a lot of crying in his time? Is that what you're trying to say? He's done a lot of looking. He has. A lot he of has. looking and a lot of thinking. Yeah. So all the lines are pointing down towards mm. the T-zone. So you've got these vertical lines that are coming down that, that finally crisscross. Mm. There's, no, there's, there's, there's like a central line, but there's no sort of division. So it doesn't continue up and divide the head by, you know, by forked or something. Um, so there's a lot of these things that, that come down to the eyes, and the eyebrows are like these great big sails, these big umbrellas yeah. that the face are pushing up to yeah. let more eye, more light into the eyes, right? Yes. So the louver doors are these wrinkles. Oh, the louver doors. Pull, yeah, the roller doors. They're oh, pulling yeah. up the skin oh, yeah. with the eyebrows, which are these big sort of. Um, it's kind of this is this is what he's this is what's happening, right? You've France got a is actually door. doing an artistic autopsy. I'm doing a door. He's actually doing an artistic autopsy here for, <laughs> for people like and, that. And, and and then you've got these little um, uh, French shades, right? Oh, Louvre, Louvre, Louvre. Yeah, you got yeah. these little French shades here. You know yeah. where they put over little windows, yeah. right? And the Louvre door with all these lines, yeah. they roll back to yeah. let light in. Ah. Okay? Because his eyes are very, very sensitive. Very. And uh, his pupils are very big, like very big. So that means they're very, very sensitive to light and the changes of light mm. over time. Um, You've done a good job on the eyebrows. I mean, yeah. they've, gone from, um, they've gone from eagle's nest to um, stork nest. Do you know those big things they put on... Um, well, let's put some on, on chimneys in. in Europe, you know, they, they sort of have these big nests Wind on chimneys. Wind vanes or something. No, they're big chimneys. I don't know. In I've Europe. never seen chimney. Do you believe in the stork? The stork? Yeah, he brings babies. That stork, you know. Uh-huh. He, okay. was, in, he was in uh, Dumbo. <laughs> right. There's a, there's a movie. Uh, there's a stork club. There's a stork club. There's a club. stork club, yeah. yeah. I, lo I love the um, stork club in... Um, um, Tex Avery's cartoons. Yes. That, yes. They make good. Um, that's a beautiful. My favourite Tex Avery cartoon is a cartoon called. Um, oh God, what's it called? It's 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 the one where they take f figures of speech. Yeah, I know that one. But you're having a senior moment, aren't you? No. You can't remember it. A symphony in slang. It's called. That's it. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Isn't he good? Symphony in Slang. Yeah. So if you get a chance... Uh, it's on, I don't know it's on it, YouTube. I don't think it's on YouTube. It is. I've, I've seen it several times. Have you? Even recently. Oh, well, I couldn't find it. Like he other. goes out and paints the town red and all that sort of stuff, yeah. all those expressions. It's yeah. awesome. It's, it's awesome. It's the best well, thing it's, ever. it's Tex Avery. I saw it when I was six or seven yeah. uh, on TV. It's very funny. And I was rolling on the floor yeah. laughing. I couldn't believe... I didn't get the jokes either. You know, but there was. I didn't need to get the jokes because they were right there in front of you, drawn. Tex as Avery, beautiful cartoons. Tex Avery for the uninitiated, um, yeah. is up there with the goons. That's how good he is. Yeah, he's a and cartoonist. He, he's, he's a Texan. That's what it's called, Tex. That's yep. his nickname. And he worked for Warner Brothers and all sorts of people. Yep. But I'll show you how funny he is. They had uh, they had ten cartoons of his. We have to draw Tex. at the. Film Festival, Melbourne Film Festival, oh, 40 years ago. Yeah. And it was a whole uh, session of Tex Avery cartoons. Oh, wow. People laughed that much. Yeah. <laughs> that they laughed that much that when, the, when the, 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 the interval came up, people were gasping for breath. They were holding their chest. They yeah. were walking around like something had really happened in that audience. You know what I mean? Mm. And that theatre seats about 3,500. So it's just amazing. I'll, ne I'll never forget that. Uh, but he has incredible um, extreme gags. Yeah. Like, um, who is it? Um, Droopy. Droopy, the, the, he's a deputy in a, in a yeah. town. He's got a sign. He just points to it. doesn't say anything. It just says, uh, quiet in this town, you know, shush and all that stuff. Mm. No, no noise um, inside the, the city limits. So when people are just like bashed his thumb... The, the wolf. He's just about to scream, and yeah, has to run Ruby outside points the... at the sign, so he has to run mile, five mile out of town to scream yeah. his head off. And at the end, it goes so much the guy has to get in a rocket, go up to the moon to 
Yeah. Yell. It's very funny. Anyway, um, forget about all that. Let's get back to George. So, how's George's? Uh, well, look. He's, he's tell starting me about to look, George's dog. He's starting to look like a because, Melway's map now. Look at mm, him. Because you've a Melway's map. Yeah. Gregory's. Ah, Gregory's. Look, the first, the first street director I ever got was Gregory. Ma, he's looking at me. The first street director I bought second hand in an op shop when I got my license, mm. and it's useless. Because it's Sydney. That's Sydney, correct? It was useless to me. Yeah. Because it's Sydney, and it was too the, small. The day you buy it, it's it was, useless. It was too small. Mm. Whereas the Melways is is big. You know, yeah. Much, well, they much try to make be- much more betterish, much more betterish. Okay. You've got him. By George, he's got him. I'm just trying to... I want to get... What I'm doing here is I'm sort of interrupting my drawing flow before I finish anything much. And then um, I'm just throwing in a few contrasts. He's working on the T-zone, folks. He's working on the T-zone. Well, black and white here, just to sort of get a feeling for, for drama. Because I'm going to hit this guy... With some white, and I want to make sure that I hit him just with the right gentle. amount. Just be gentle. Just be gentle. I don't want to be gentle. When you hit him, you know. No, I don't want to be gentle. I want to be like Tex Avery. I want to be, you know, have a punchline that uh, that actually hits home. So um, now, what are these lines? Because George has very pronounced lines. What are those lines? The cheek, the end of the cheek. What what, what do they resonate? With, at the top of the nose? Yeah. Yeah, that goes from there to there, that line there. What do you call that line? What do you call that line? Okay, so lines that are formed by the mouth closing yeah. means that the guy doesn't talk much. Ah. Okay? Lines that are okay. formed with the mouth open, when yeah. you see people have this sort of plastered grin on their face. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a, a bus. Are you getting pu- stuck in, in, inside in... of a bus with all these these radio personalities yeah. where they have these big grins yeah. and uh, for no reason. And I can't hold grin. I can't hold a grin. It, no. It, it, it looks weird. It's, it's against your nature. It is. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I smile it's against and your, I laugh. It's against your, your deep but Russian if, Slavic nature. But you can't just say, can you smile, Mr. Cantor? Can you smile for a second? And I'll get a nice picture. You've spent a bit of time in America, have you? No! <laughs> well, I, they, um, they talk like that in Sydney, do they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't smile much. I, I mean, I smile, but I, I, don't, I don't have this blasted, you know, idiot's grin on my face. Oh. So the lines around the mouth are keeping it shut. They're, that means that, you know, you don't talk very much. That's what a lot of these lines are for. So when when people have this sort of inane grin, like a like a the village idiot, um, they have lines that correspond that mean that that they keep their mouth open all the time. So they're really there to catch the flies. I'm starting us. to suspect that when you see protect people us, smiling, protect you, us from when, flies. When you see people smiling, I I suspect that you think they're idiots. They're grinning by your, idiots. By your last couple of sentences. Yeah. You know what I mean. The people yeah, I, that of course smile. I, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, sure. And there's yeah. nothing. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. What's the joke? Uh, what's the joke? Oh no, I'm just smiling because I'm happy. Mm, really? Well, we weren't taught that. Well, if you're uh, happy uh, and you're... you know it, clap your hands. That's what we were taught. No, I was taught like uh, you know. You clap your hands when you're happy, not no. to smile. Are you McLean showing? Ah. Oh. Now, I have a feeling that your whole early upbringing I loved ads. was manifested in advertising. I loved ads. That's right. Loved them. He does. Loved them. And Louis the Fly was my favourite. If you were going to write a biography about your early childhood, it'd just be a whole string of well, ads. I would love to talk to Russell Howcroft or someone like that about the medium of advertising. What, you and Louis the Fly? Well, not just that. It's just the whole of the idea of it's a pure form of... Um, communication it's really really um precise and purposeful yeah because but you're it's there also to sell. lies it's also no, lies. It's not. yes but, it is no it's not you're talking about unscrupulous nine, nine out of ten doctors smoke cool uh, no smoke uh, camel because it's the best it's you know it's the cool one it's a clean cigarette and all that stuff you know? what are you talking they're about? lies 
Doctors smoking camels. Yeah, they had all these ads in the in the fifties about doctors who smoked. Nine out of ten doctors smoke this particular brand and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, advertising ad, ad, hasn't been going on for very long, so it kind of started. It has. It's been no, going, it, it didn't. Has. It started in the fifties. No, it didn't. It did. Proper oh, advertising. Oh, proper advertising. Yeah. Oh, okay. Before that, it's just sort of like um, posters, retail street. crap. Oh, you mean psychological, where they get deep into your head and and, no, and, and they make you about, go out and buy about things commu- you don't proper, want. No, it's about communication, proper communication. Okay. So you know there is an element of people being brainwashed, but you know, I mean, if if you have that sort of brain that that. That, um, now, now, okay. Advertising can wash, then you're. Up we should be talking about drink. George. We might as well get get this over and done with. Okay, the Mr. Sheen ad, right? Now you like the Mr. Sheen ad, don't you? Yeah. It communicates. It's an right? English ad, English product. Well, it's yeah, but Australian put their their slant heart on it. Heart and soul into it. That's right. They put their heart and soul in. Like okay. Vegemite. Oh God, Vegemite. You got some. He's got. I've he doesn't got like lot, Vegemite. I've got guy. a lot against Vegemite. I've got a lot. Because he hates it. You know, um, so. I didn't think much of Obama. Actually, I didn't even know much about him. And then someone gave him Vegemite, and he oh, showed. Dear. He said oh, it's terrible. And straight away, he was a friend of mine. You know, a hero. Went straight up the top. You know, the. Uh, I just want to mention. I don't. I like Vegemite. I've grown up with it, but uh, I have a. You know, obviously, you know, you you have to like. Uh, um, who was it who, who showed Americans how to use Vegemite properly? Um, uh, men at work? No, um, no, Wolverine. Wolverine? Yeah. R- really? Him. How, how could he, how could he uh, with those hands of his, how could mm. he sort of... Uh, well, they're butter knives. No, they're not. It's so one blade, no. It's um, Hugh Jackman. He was on American TV and... Yeah. Uh, the boy showed, from Oz. Yeah, he was he was the explaining the right way to eat Vegemite, which, you know, the it's like you know it's obviously, um, it's a it's a joke because everybody once you just all you got to do is taste it, and then you know oh well that's too much, because it's like wasabi, you know. I mean you, you don't have to be an idiot to know that wasabi's hot, and you can't eat it. It's not guacamole. It looks like guacamole, but it's not guacamole. So um, the same thing with Vegemite. You know, there's too much uh, made of it. Like, you know, they, they presume that people are idiots. And, do you know uh, what I use Vegemite for? I've actually got some. But do you know what I use it for? Cleaning? <laughs> no, besides fixing up my truck when it needs degreasing, you know, um, I put it in gravies. Yeah. That, that's all I use it for. My mum used to uh, smear it on on lamb chops and uh, it gave it a salty you didn't need salt because it's salty yeah black salt Texas tea now stop mixing your metaphors <laughs> I don't care about that <laughs> metaphors are made to be mixed are they mm. metaphors are made to be mixed I'm getting into you this have a certain area sense of, see this uh, area rhetoric. here I'm coming in into your the... um Communication, a certain sense of rhetoric. Or metric. No, rhetoric. Ah, okay. It's a measurable sort of, uh, you know, uh, metric. What was that bloke's Measures name in that movie? Rhetoric. Ret- rhetoric Butler. Is that his name? Yeah. Rhetoric Butler. Yeah. What movie? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn about Vegemite. You've got him. I'm um, You've got him. You haven't even put... finished him, but you got him. Okay, There's... You know, there's when you draw a nose, a nose is a nose. That's a famous poem by um, Gertrude Stein, isn't it? A nose is a nose. Mm. So it's, um, we've, got to, we've got to get the expression right on the mouth too because it's very important. So you keep your eye on the curve of the, the gap. And he's tight lipped. Yeah, don't yeah. let the top he's lip throw lipped. you. Right? Because it's, don't let the top lip throw you. And don't think of lips having to be outlined like so. Don't do that, because that's, that's a symbol of a lip. Salvador Dali did that, and he turned it into a couch. Yeah. So don't do that. That's a symbol of a lip, right? So you don't want to put symbols. Yeah, don't symbols. Symbols are great, but 
Not on the if toe. If you're trying to Not get on the lips. a realistic impression, they're yeah. going to throw you off. Yeah. Well, unless they wear makeup like lipstick, then it's different. No, well, yeah, but then it just sort of gives a um, a harsher. Uh, it's harder to find the actual lip um, when you hide it with a lot of makeup and stuff. Yeah, it is. So you actually you need to look for forms. Well, that's what lipstick does. It 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 it, it uh, widens your lips. It sort of um, you know, you can you can by the application you can make your lips as big and or as small as you want to. Yeah. So this beautiful little uh, ventriloquist dummy uh, lines around the mouth. I have these two. I like them. They're very. Um, now what are they for? That means your mouth shut. And. Um, but you do a lot of talking. Uh, only when I'm provoked. Ah. So, so a lot of it is... Certain is people walk around with crowbars think. and they're able to get you to open your well, mouth. George over. does a lot of observation. He does. I don't do a lot of observation. Yes, you do. I, no, I do I've a lot you. of internal... Oh, that's thoughts. right. It's all that mess upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. The grey stuff. Yeah. I wish I did. I wish I had the ability to analyse the world more. You know, I'd be able to get... I'd like the world more, I think. I'd be able to get more I out of it. I think that most, um, most artists... They don't look. like the world... They look. They look. Yeah, and they get all the info. I mean, you get you get what's it? Ninety three percent of our everything uh, through our eyes. Mm. That's how we learn everything. You know, the bulk of everything through our eyes. Yeah, but you're constantly uh, testing and evaluating. Yeah, but you know, I, I disagree. You've definitely got an eye because I've seen you. I mean, that drawing you did of that um, of that box of dog. Mm. You, you know, you almost look into the soul of the dog in that drawing. Yeah, it's more looking... And, and that dog is an individual, it's not just a boxer. And you've got the individual. So the only way you can do that is to see it. Yeah. A lot of people look into the eyes of a dog and they think, oh, it's What's... cute, oh, it looks like me, or whatever they do. It, it, it's got okay, sad well, eyes, all that sort into, of stuff. We're getting into you semantics, get in... but the difference no. is between seeing and looking that you're referring to. Yeah, artists go deeper. Mm. You go deeper. George, is, George goes deeper. Mm. All artists go beyond what normal people see. Well, like children. Children have an inquiring mind. Artists have a, yeah. should have an I mean, inquiring mind. You're looking at negative space off. as well. The average person doesn't even know what negative space is, but you're looking at negative space. Mm. I'm full of negative space. <laughs> I concur. So, uh, okay, I'm going to hit the. I'm going to get the black pin out in the middle. You can stop drawing now because you've got him. These. I'll you have to do the. Can eyebrows. stop drawing. Oh yeah, do the eyebrows. Um, he has got a few grey hairs. Mm. It's not the hairs that 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 are the important thing here. It's the lines around that tell the story of of George, what George is, what's important to George. You know, it's interesting. Um, I've been involved with poet, um, poets, groups of poets, uh, filmmakers, um, cartoonists, writers groups. Mothers groups. Yes, I was the only mother there, yeah, the only male there. And... Um, Things have changed a lot, but it's just that um, there's a lot of... With the artists, there is a lot of pettiness that goes on. Pettiness? Yeah, like between... Like petty? No, no. What do you mean, no, pettiness? pettiness. Explain. Jealousies and... Of... And, and silliness, you of know. Of what? what? Well, you, you know, s you know, a lot of infighting in the groups and all that sort of stuff. And of all those experiences I've had, the, the cartoonists are the friendliest lot. They really are. They're the friendliest lot. They... They help each other out. They don't backstab each other. I mean, you hear a few stories, but generally they're, they're the best um, behaved bunch of art, art, art type of artists I've ever come across. Mm. I've known a few um, composers and musicians, but um, well, yeah, they're very ego based, I guess. Well, they, I mean, they have but, to but, be it, because but of most their, of their work, their they, jobs. they don't really join things, you know. And most cartoonists don't join clubs either, you know. They sort of they're all solitary sort of. People. I mean, there's a lot of cartoonists 
in this country, in the ACA, the Australian Cartoonists Association, is always complaining that that there's so many cartoonists who won't join the club. But that's that's because they don't. They're not mm. they're not club joiners, you know. Well, they they have the, priorities. The, you have different. But the um, cartoonists, the cartoonists, are really friendly. They help you out. Um, really nice blokes. Wonderful your tire. blokes. Wonderful blokes. Wash your tyres. Well, yeah. Weg used to wash my tyres every time I went to visit him. Yeah. But, and he's an old bloke, you know. But George, George is a gentleman amongst gentlemen. He's a lovely, lovely bloke. No one would say anything bad about George. He's just deeply respected by the, the, the cartoonist community. And I love talking to him because, you know, I, I can talk. I have very, very few people I can actually talk shop to and... They know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And the time, few times that I've spoken to George, he's, he's like he's right there even before you... You don't even have to say anything a lot of the times. He just he instinctively knows what uh, yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so... I regard him as a wise man. Hmm. Although well, he's al- an explorer. Although he, although he did play Cartoon. tennis. He did play tennis. I'll hold that against him. What do you mean, Professionally. Oh well, he was getting into it. He's actually played with. He played against McEnroe. Not, you know, um, in the, he was he was a junior champion. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, well, that's something. That's important. A lot of cartoonists, sort of, uh, or artists in general, they don't really have time for uh, sport, which is a shame. You know, because... Um, yeah, you'd be great at chess. I am good at chess. Really? Oh, I know you'd be great at chess. Yeah. Um, can I ask you a personal question? No. And do you prefer black um, chess or white ones? Which ones? What do you mean by that? Well, what side are you on? You're on the black or the white? Um, the colours are... You can the... swap between, you know, you don't have I to know that, one. but which ones do you prefer? I don't have any preference for for chess. The white goes first. I would know. I'm I'm hopeless at chess. I played with a 18 year old about five years ago and beat me in about three minutes. Um. Yeah. (laughs) Only only play games you can win, mate. That's it. What's this, the old Monopoly rule? You know, like people in Monopoly. I never won that, Monopoly. God. You know, people get sick of Monopoly. They get very bored yeah, with Monopoly. Yeah, they never win. They never win. Yeah, I know. But somebody's winning. Yeah, oh, yeah. And that person is the one that's. Um, they have the bragging rights. Yeah, there's always a. Um, <laughs> have all the there's five always a, a, a Packer or a Murdoch in your group of friends who, you know, clean up. Well, it's a family thing. I wouldn't play with Monopoly's. It's not a very civil game, so you wouldn't play it with, with um, friends. You play with your family. You play with what, your family. Because they forgive you Yeah, you, you go you, off your you tree. You can throw the ball <laughs> at your family. <laughs> I don't want to go to jail. Oh. <laughs> go to jail. What am I going to do with this stupid... Um, this, it's a brush. Excuse me. But it's, um, a, paint, it's a paintbrush. An but... artist doesn't blame his tools, all right? No, that's carpenters. Oh, Sorry. Did your dad, he was a carpenter, did he blame his tools? Um, I don't think he did. Oh, I made a mistake mm. with the hair direction. Let's fix that up. I'll go back in there with the... But they go all over the place. They, they definitely go all over the place. Mm. My God, they could start flapping and take off those things. Yes, they look uh, terrific. this Jonathan Livingston Seagull <laughs> and his mate. They look terrific. They really look terrific. Um, you so, George has got a. You've made his mouth a little, little bit mean, but he hasn't got a mean mouth. Just a little bit. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. Am I correct or what? Uh, it's only my opinion. Just a little bit of a facelift here. A little bit of a facelift. You can stop now. You, you, you finished it. It's perfect, you know. Where's the, the go? Where's this? I need this. 
I need to build up a... Um, Don't break it. Con- Watch those nibs. I need to build up more context of flesh. Around the, um, the lines, yeah. yeah. Well, you know... The, the meaty we, muscles. We're getting back to the highlight. We're getting back to the meaty the muscles. It's, where is it? The highlight. The um, light source is coming yeah. in from the top right. The meaty muscles. Mm. There's also a lot of uh, work to be done in the hair too. Yeah. Coices! A lot of grey hair. Foiled again. Yeah. So uh, this is going to be a long one, I think. So do you prefer drawing uh, this way or do you prefer drawing digitally? Um, I've, I, I know this I've actually found it very difficult to draw digitally. digitally. I paint digitally, but uh, that's, you know, with bigger... Is that easier than yeah, drawing? Yeah, of course. What, what do you mean? What, painting digitally, is that easier than digitally drawing? I haven't been able to draw digitally. Ah, OK. I scan pencils in and... OK, uh, yeah paint them that way um it's funny over the years because i love talking to cartoonists especially if they're caricaturists they're my favorite cartoonists i must admit and a lot of them well, most of them use um, um computers to draw mm, mm. but they all say that one of the reasons they went to computers is because they used to save a lot of time yeah and now it's the reverse they spend more time on the drawing because they're doing it with the computer than, than if they did it by hand and with, with, with paint. Yeah, you you tend to be very... Um, you can zoom in, and because you zoom yeah. in, you end up putting in far more details But every than couple you of years, normally. every couple of years, they update the the, um, the programs, and, you know, now, now you've got a symphony orchestra of tools that sort of exceeds, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, you know? Yeah, there's so a different there's the choice, a worse practice. The choice is, is staggering, you know, what you can well, use. Mm, yeah, but you basic you only use tools that you're comfortable with. Yeah, I know, but like you're not the other day you were talking about, you know, how how it's good only to use a few colours in your work, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's the same thing with Photoshop. Yeah, but you have incredible choice on Photoshop, you know. You can change colours yeah. where you couldn't change colours before. Yeah. You're but stuck I'm just with saying maybe before. is is that the reason that it takes longer to do something on on um, on computer on Photoshop than it did in the old days because the reason people went to Photoshop because it was quicker in the mm. first place. Uh, I don't know if that's true. That's not because it's quicker. I'm asking. I don't. I'm think... not not telling. No, look, it's something that Photoshop was created to fulfil a need. A lot of people wanted different, you know, tools at their fingertips, airbrush and. Yep. Um, crayons and pencils and things at their fingertips that they, yeah. you know, they didn't have to fork out money for. Yeah. Um, good, good art materials are expensive. Yeah, that's for sure. And you should, and and as, as you said, you should only use the best because you get better results. Well, yeah. The, unfortunately, the um, the science of creating you binding pigment and stuff is very. Um, very expensive and uh, you know you tend to to get what you pay for in art materials Um, and this is right across the board especially with acrylics acrylics is something I really dislike Uh, I haven't been able to work with them I keep buying sets of acrylics and then giving them to my daughter because I don't have the patience acrylic is something like watercolor it dries at a different color a different tint different shade so they have that sort of level of uh, unpredictability it also has a different flow so it dries faster than oils, oils yeah that's why people um, use it yeah people use it for that i don't look i i have done oil paintings where i've used extensive water um, acrylic as an underpainting method you know to get some quick tones down so that i can throw oil on top but I haven't um, been able to use acrylic uh, convincingly, or t- to my to, to make so that I feel confident to say that I can use acrylic. It's a very I find it very um, unpredictable and um, uh, not very not very nice, uh, not very friendly like watercolor or even oil. You know, people get scared of using oil paint, but really 
oil is it's flexible. It's not going to dry anytime soon. So you can <coughs> but move it's also it around. Expen- more expensive than acrylic. Yeah, but again, you know what I just said about the paint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, you get what you pay for. What you pay for. A lot of the time, um, I've gone into art shops and talked um, to the people who run them. Yeah, and they tell me that um, um, the Chinese, because they they make a lot of paints, a, a lot of canvases, all these things. You know, yeah, all the cheap stuff comes out from China. But they said that China can't do um, uh, paint properly. But I can't. I, I've never believed that. You know, um, but obviously. Paint what, is just powder. Yeah, but what you were saying before is that um, the, uh, keeping the, um, the it's expensive in part, the expensive part of paints is the the pigment. The pigment, and the people in the shops tell me that they don't know how to do pigment, but it's obviously an economic decision, not the fact that the Chinese don't know about pigment. I think that you know it's like saffron. I think that the owners of certain colours have a monopoly. Um, so that whether they're chemically produced oh, or okay. from okay. natural resources, I don't know. But I think you know things like blue. I was looking at blue it the other day in a in a um, art shop, and I was thinking that's like a um, Eve's Klein blue, and he registered blue. And there's another guy that's registered red, and another guy that's registered yellow. Didn't he call it nude blue? Uh, probably. Did he painted it on nude ladies. Well, he printed new. He he put the paint on them and then rolled them onto That's canvas. That's right. He did on canvas. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a very interesting guy. He's actually came up with this um, manifesto that um, was better than Manoretti's um, manifesto on the futurists. Manoretti, yes. So he came up with this because um, he was constantly analysing his process. Eve's client, you know, he's, he's like an empresario in many ways. He's, uh, he was. But he was. He wasn't very the usual man, artist, that's for sure. And, and a great thinker. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of uh, art articles in, in art magazines about, uh, about him and what his, what his thoughts are because they're quite, they reflect on the modern day processes as well. Uh, especially the commodification of art, which is the, um, you know, showing in galleries and making money. Mm. Um, so the value, where is the value? So his take on this whole, whole well, concept it, was that um, he did invent installations, but he certainly pushed it along at a, a speed right, well, of there's, knots. Yeah, there's a reason why the insta- there's a reason why the performance art um, for Eve's. And uh, for a lot of people, studied a lot, um, a, a incredible amount of dialogue about the value of art. What is art? Um, you know, it's a perennial sort of question, I guess. But um, he actually had some really clever answers. And uh, one is that um, the idea that the performance, what we are looking at now, the actual creation of art, to Eves is art. That's the art. So the end, where the the painting is finished, that's not the art. So that's quite oh, the important. Art of art. Well, the art yeah, of art. Okay. it's quite an important uh, thing to remember because, you know, uh, artists are very close to their work, right? So they're quite Im- invisible uh, to the process itself. Um, they're, they're quite ignorant of the. Uh, we should actually get some black uh, brush into the eyes just to kick it out a little bit. No, we don't need that one. Uh, let's try to get a finer one. Did I just pick that up? I did, and that's not the one I want. What a Mingaka. No, top of that. Is this one? No, that's not it either. Why have I got all these wrong, wrong brushes? Let's go back to this. When in doubt, stay the permanent. A good go. artist doesn't blame his tools. You know. I couldn't find the brush, the, a, a brush pen that was. Well, ninety percent of these pens have got black. They're all black. No one can yeah, find Yeah, no, them. but some of them have different flexible nibs, and yeah. so they're all different properties. And I want to sort of get a little bit of a flexible. Your head is in the camera. You I know, know that. I know. I just love looking at the, the close-up. You're doing a great job there. So, um, uh, actually, you know what? That brush that you gave me before, we might try that.
So, like Karl Barks, thick and thin lines that denote three-dimensional properties, that th- you know, things that come at you, things that are round, you know, they can... Mm. Donald Duck's feet, beautiful and round. The volume. Yeah, so it's a beautiful um, way of thinking about forms, you know. At this stage, you're not referring back to the reference material. You're actually creating something on your own, um, which is, you know... Oh, it's scary, but, you know, hey, you're not doing the whole thing in brush. You're just trying to create a sense of drama between uh, light and dark. So you're but helping it out. You still a lot of a, light and you dark still, is... What you refer to the hierarchy of the drawing, yeah, you've still well, got to be careful because also to at do that stage you can use black in such a way that, oh, oh, it just breaks the whole balance of the drawing. Yeah. So you've got to be careful. Yeah. But, you know, this is live, so anything could happen. It could be... Uh, anything could happen in the next half hour. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Um, so the concept of, like, you know, thick and thin lines are for delineation of, uh, like, contrast between the shapes that, you know, having the foreground elements stand out from the background is one, and also to create a sense of roundness Mm -hmm. because the thick line very quickly, if I was to do a circle, right, that's thin up there and thick down there, Mm -hmm. that looks like it's a ball. So that's the principle. Uh, of course, you know, this is a guide, it's not, well, a, it's looks, not a... It also it's looks a, like it's, that line's been affected by gravity. Yes. And as we know, everything in the universe is affected by gravity. No, except in space. No, everything's affected by gravity. Yeah, by... Yeah, all Even right. your jokes, you know. Well, gravitas. That's the stuff. Let's grab some of that. I'll have some gravitas with uh, sweet and sour sauce. Do you want um, gravitas with that? Yeah. You you know, I've been doing this now for lockdown. It's probably about 40 Probably closer to 50 or 60, yeah. Mm. Is it? Yeah, you've done... Well, you're on your... It feels like a prisoner of Zender. You're on your third month, aren't you? The prisoner of who? Prisoner of Zender. Ah, do you know anything about that film? No. Let's talk about the Count of Monte Cristo. I don't know. I know something about Prisoner that. Prisoner of Count of Monte. Robert Donat, isn't it? Or no, it was. Um, oh, what's his name? It's a very good film. Prisoner of Zender. Or uh, Count of Monte Cristo. That's a well. That's a great. That's a um, classic story. I love that story. I read that when I was a teenager. Yeah, I, identi- I read the... the um, I identify with it because I spent a lot of time in my room as a teenager. Did I, you? I identified with being locked up. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I read the uh, the gold key. Uh, the comic. The, what is it? The classics the Illustrated. Key. I hated gold key. They're only good... Stop they're, hating gold key. They, they had lovely covers. Yes. Right, and then you turn the page and... Uh, boring. What are you talking about? They did um, Turax, Turok, Son of Stone. Well, I, they're the Ooh. only ones. They're the only ones I've actually got at home. Really? Yeah, I've kept them. You should. I've kept them. Well, you should bring them. But in. all we the other stuff. See them. All the other stuff. God. I mean, I kids. love their uh, cartoons that they used to um, have. You know, like the, what? Well, they, had, they did Hanna Barbera. For oh, them. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Deputy Dog and. All of the cartoons that that you were familiar with on TV, mm. I've lost a little bit of. Have you seen um, a Clockwork Orange? Recently, I've never seen it before. But, um, oh, okay. Well, you know how he loves Beethoven. Yeah. And and how they actually make him hate Beethoven. Yeah. They strap him down. And, I'd like to do that to you and just show you. With Beethoven. No, show you a lot of Hanna Barbera. You know. um, well, Hanna Barbera, the great Hanna Barbera, was up until just before Funky Phantom, so it would be um, the first season of um, Scooby Doo, not including the Hair Bear Bunch, 
and not including Funky Phantom and not including Goober and the Ghost Chasers. I apologise to so our up viewers until then, it for was starting great. This, this raid that I, I should have known better, as the Beatles would say. The Beatles? Yeah. I should have known better. Oh. What, you can't find it right now? Thicker one. Posca are great, but they put out all of these different sizes, and it's a little bit sort of... I think I've asked this question before, but what's the difference between these and um, whiteouts? Whiteout pens. Well, whiteouts are correction pens. These yeah, are paintbrushes. Yeah, but is, this, is it made of the same stuff? The actual white, is it the same stuff? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't think so. I think these are acrylic. Oh, okay. okay. Whiteout tends to build up, yeah. caked on top of each other. So yeah. if I was to do the... As I did with the eyebrows, the old they would formula, be really thick and impasto. The old formula, so stick you, up like the old formula used to build up. I don't know about the new formula. I haven't quite yet. <sighs> yeah. This is George. Howdy, George. By George. He's got it. Yeah, that's George. And uh, this is George. And uh, this is uh, Jim. And this is France. Yeah. And, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Whatever that means. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.